Mmm. Yeah, these brownies are really good. Would you like one? They look really good. Can I have one? Yeah, Wait a minute, Jenna. Salad's a lot healthier for you. Why would I want a salad when I can have a brownie? If you wait a minute, we'll tell you. Because education, education today, today starts, starts now. now. Welcome to Education Today. I'm Aiden Apelka, a senior at Ford City High School. And I'm Alexa Waite, also a senior at Ford City High School. It's the beginning of another new year, which means another 365 days of telling ourselves that we are going to become better people. So we have made our New Year's resolutions. So often, though, those resolutions fall through for one reason or another. However, we thought it might be easier to keep these resolutions if we didn't set such unreachable goals. We're here today with Mrs. Luann Fee, the Armstrong School District Director of Nutrition, who will try to help all of us with this. Welcome to Education Today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Would you please explain the basics of your job? Well, in a nutshell, my job is to monitor all the foods sold in our 11 schools across the district. Uh, we make sure that those foods that are sold during the school day to children meet the guidelines set by the Department of Education. Now, the Department of Education started the school lunch program during World War II. Wow. During World War II, the soldiers couldn't pass the physicals to enter the armed forces because they were underweight. So the government uh, decided to put a noontime meal into the schools so that at least children would at least receive one uh, well-balanced meal a day. Right. Now, times have changed and children aren't as physically active as they are in the past. So studies have shown increasing uh, problems with nutrition, including uh, fragmented eating habits, poor uh, nutrition choices, poor food choices, obesity and eating disorders. Mm -hmm. So in 2006, um, the Department of Education came up with new guidelines, and these guidelines ask schools to reduce the amount of fat in the school lunch program, increase the fruits and vegetables, and um, fiber in the school meals. We also monitor calories, protein, fat, carbohydrates, vitamin A, C, calcium, and iron. Oh, I do notice we have lots of fruit at our school. Mm -hmm. yes. I love it. It's very and good. It seems like, you know, kids are eating a lot more and yeah. getting a lot more overweight, so they just started putting better foods in the uh, lunchroom to make it. Well, I'm glad to hear that. In addition to writing and analyzing the menus, I also set the specifications for the food, so I'm glad to hear you're happy. Um, yes. We, uh, I do the equipment, uh, I do the hiring of the food service staff, we have 11 managers, 11 cooks, and 57 general workers. Wow. And uh, this is kind of interesting. We serve approximately 5,000 lunches a day across the district. Oh wow, that's, that's real good. And we've gone from 900 breakfast last year to 1,200 this year. So wow. we're increasing breakfast sales. That's good. And any ideas you can give me on breakfast <laughs> sales to increase them, I'd love that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people at uh, Ford City like to eat breakfast. Yeah, I see a lot of people down there in the morning. The it's good to hear. It's packed. Now, do you live by the same guidelines that you make for the district, or do you have even higher expectations for yourself? Well, again, the guidelines are set by the Department of Education, and I try to live by them. Um, I'm doing better personally uh, each year. I exercise more, um, eat better, and uh, I'm currently on a weight loss program and doing oh, very well at that's it. That's good. I should point out that those guidelines are set uh, for school-age students, uh, not older adults like myself. So if I ate the 800 calories that uh, are uh, set for you for lunch, eight to 900 calories, I would surely gain weight. Yes. Well, how do you decide what goes on the menu? Well, first I should mention that I have dietetic interns from IUP, and uh, they work with me. They're constantly keeping track of uh, new menu ideas, recipes that they think you might like. Um, they're constantly gathering information on new foods. And each summer, then, we look at the cycle menu we take our daily production sheets because the cafeteria managers write down everything that you eat. So we know what you've consumed, what you like, and what you don't like. And we weed out the foods then that you don't like for our menu, and we uh, try to keep the foods that you do. Then we go to restaurants, and we look at the favorite restaurants and the foods that you like there. We look at them to see if we can uh, offer them, if we can 
fit, fit them into our nutritional guidelines and if we can afford them. Right. And uh, we also do surveys. In fact, tomorrow I'm meeting with the uh, student council at um, West Shemokin. Okay. And we're going to do some taste testing and see what we Well, this year especially, I've noticed that there's quite a selection, like from the past years, there's definitely a lot more options. Absolutely. I'm trying. Yeah, <laughs> like in the past, you know, sometimes, you know, it'd be the same foods, different days, you know what I mean? Just, you know, mixing, but it's really mix and match now. Each day you have a new, different selection, yeah. and it's nice. And kids don't complain about the lunches now. They, they really like the lunches at school. Oh, you're yeah. making my day. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <coughs> now, do you create these menus month by month, or do you set up the whole year's menu at the beginning? We run a six-week menu cycle. Oh, okay. So the menu repeats itself every six right. weeks. But foods, favorite foods like the spicy chicken patty, yeah. that's on several times during yeah, the cycle. I, yeah, a lot of people that. like that. They do. favorite. <laughs> it's good. How much planning and preparation actually goes into each day's meals? Well, creating the recipes and the menus is done by myself, and my interns help me. Um, actually choosing the food products is done by the cafeteria managers and myself. Yeah. Then the actual preparation, determining the amounts of food to order and the amount to make, why that's done by the cafeteria managers and the cooks. They look at the previous production records and they know how a certain food uh, is sold or how it's taken and they can guess, but it is a guessing game to yeah. know what you might take. For the, for the next time it's on the menu. Um, and then they also have that difficult task of watching so that they don't overproduce and have food waste. Right. Sounds like hard work. It is, it's, it's I, I admire them. Now, do any types of traditions, whether they be local, national, or otherwise, play into meal decisions? We, uh, we follow the tr local traditions for holiday menus, and we uh, also do the national school lunch week and things like that. Uh, we also offer some traditional ethnic foods that I'm told don't sell so much in other school districts. For instance, pierogies are a big seller in our I district. I love pierogies. Yeah. <laughs> I do. And, and really they're not good. in other districts. The school, the school pierogies are really good, actually. <laughs> it's good to hear. Yeah. The, um, the students asked to have shepherd's pie back, which yes. was surprising to yes. me, and it's selling very well. It's we don't excellent. call it shepherd's pie, though. We call it cheeseburger bowl. And then by doing that, the smaller children would take it because we called it cheeseburger bowl yep. instead of shepherd's pie. So a doll and how you name it. <laughs> hot, yeah, hot turkey sandwiches are also, oh, yes. they don't sell so well in other districts, but here really? they sell very well. Yeah. I think of shepherd's pie beforehand, it's cheeseburger bowl now, but I think it used to come like a lasagna. Right. Like in a way, they used to give you a big piece of it. It, it was really good like that, and it's good like the cheeseburger bowl now, too. It was good both ways. Which way do you prefer it, though? I, I like the lasagna form better. You do? Yeah. I like That's the That's interesting. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> myself. Shows the different preferences. <laughs> so often, people concentrate on the importance of dieting, but neglect to focus on the need for physical activity. Our team recently sat down with Ms. Kara Grafton, the Catanian Varsity Volleyball Coach, who will now tell us a little more about the importance of physical activity. I'm Joe Sipple, and I'm here interviewing one of the teachers at FCHS. Why don't you tell us your name and what do you do here at Fort City? My name is Miss Grafton and I teach 11th grade uh, World Cultures and Government and I teach uh, some 8th grade as well, U.S. History. All right, now, how do you stay fit? Well, uh, I think that everyone should have a very relative um, workout plan. I coach volleyball for Catanning High School, so with that I like to um, you know, keep up my exercise. I belong to a gym in Catanning. Uh, I try to run, I like to run a lot and do um, some kickboxing classes, different things like that. But overall, uh, volleyball seems to keep me pretty well, um, you know, in shape and uh, relatively fit, I would say. That's very nice. How do you keep your team in shape? Well, in volleyball, you have to be very, uh, in shape, very fit. You have to be able to withstand going five games with an opposing team. So what I like to do is I like to have my girls uh, run a lot of sprints. You're not marathon running, so it's not, you know, go run two miles, but it's a lot of short distances, sprints, um, a lot of calisthenics and plyometrics, things like that, just to keep them uh, enough so that they can withstand five games. Now we know that not every student can play sports with the school. So how do you think students who aren't involved in sports should stay fit? 
Well, I believe that everyone should have a healthy diet. I think um, just overall in life that will make you uh, more healthy in the long run. So a good diet and you should join something that you like. If you like to play racquetball or if you like to play basketball, go outside and, and shoot some hoops every once in a while or take a walk on a nice day. I think it's just a good practice to get in. You know, a few times a week, just do exercise, some type of exercise that you wouldn't normally do. What sports did you play when you were in high school? When I was in high school, I played uh, volleyball, basketball, and softball um, for Fort City High School. I graduated from Fort City. And then uh, in college, I also played volleyball as well. Uh, where did you play for volleyball? Uh, Pitt, the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown. Oh, that's very nice. Do you encourage healthy education as part of being a teacher at FCHS? I think absolutely it's so important to have a healthy lifestyle. Um, I always like to stay positive and even with talking with volleyball with the students I think it promotes a little bit of uh, that healthy lifestyle that everybody should go out and do some type of exercise that maybe they wouldn't normally do or join a sport, sport or join a club that uh, they're interested in. Now back to the volleyball. Do you think volleyball puts your athletes in the top shape they need to be? I get my girls coming off of the summer, uh, going right into school and into the uh, fall season, and I think it really transforms them, um, you know, coming off those lazy summer months. It uh, gets them uh, running and in shape and as fit as they can pretty much be. Uh, we do a lot of uh, running, and they all tell me that they start to lose weight during uh, their, our season. So I think they do uh, become into pretty good shape during volleyball. Do you think there's anything else students could do to stay fit? Uh, I, like I said, I just think that any type of exercise, you know, go, in, go out and walk a half a mile or run a half mile or maybe join a couple classes at, you know, the YMCA or, uh, you know, something like that. That could definitely be a, uh, an advantage to you in, in just staying and having an overall healthy lifestyle. We're back with Armstrong School District's Education Today. Today we are talking to Luann Fee, the Armstrong School District Director of Nutrition, who is telling us about her work with nutrition and health in the area schools. Now, could you give our viewers any tips for some good, quick, but healthy meals for their children and teenagers? Mm -hmm, I'd love to. The Center for Disease Control recommends planning meals ahead of time. In doing this, you avoid temptations like going to the fast food line or uh, drive throughs and also convenience foods like frozen TV dinners. Yeah. Uh, some ideas are keep some quick foods like whole wheat tortillas, whole wheat pastas, lean meats, fresh or frozen vegetables on hand so you can put together a quick healthy meal. Uh, keep some fat-free low-sodium cream soups because they can provide a quick and healthy sauce for both pastas and meats. When you can, use 100% whole grains, uh, whole wheat, and uh, brown rice, oats, items like that. Keep those all on hand. Switch if you can to the lean proteins, which are the ch chicken, the fish, the turkey. Um, maybe try a turkey burger instead of a beef burger. When you're purchasing ground beef, purchase 90% uh, uh, beef, 10% fat, 90% or higher. Uh, some other things you can do would be add fruits to uh, and vegetables to favorite foods. And an example is uh, add some spinach or broccoli to your pasta. Uh, put fruit in your cereal. My intern Amber prepared a few uh, recipes uh, that we have on PowerPoint slides for you, and those recipes are also listed in our web page under food service under the wellness. The first uh, slides are some quick and healthy recipe ideas for main courses. And the first one is uh, quiche with ham and broccoli. Mm, that sounds so good. <laughs> this is a healthier quiche because it has lots of broccoli and low-fat cheese in it. And to keep the calories down, we've done that. Also, uh, you could consider adding things like mushrooms, peppers, spinach, any, any vegetable actually to the quiche. Another one that she found was a creamy pasta with beef and mushrooms and peas. Now, the reduced fat cream and mushroom soup makes a quick and healthy sauce, while the whole grain pasta and veggies add a healthy dose of fiber and nutrients. And uh, I think this looks like a really good one. It yes, does. it does. It looks delicious. This is a, a little uh, different one. It's an Italian-style veggie bake. And this saucy dish can help satisfy those pizza cravings, at the same time delivering lots of veggies. Um, I think this one looks the best. We but all then, love pizza, so. yeah, I'm a pizza lover too. 
The last one is a Cajun turkey burger, and that would be swapping out the beef for lean turkey. It would reduce the fat greatly and the calories, and but I think it would keep the flavor, and the Cajun <laughs> spicy is what I find students like. I've never had a turkey burger, but i definitely like to try one. I think maybe we'll give this a try in the, in the lunch That's program. Yeah, honestly, I think a lot more people, you know, would enjoy lunch. Uh, don't get me wrong, they enjoy it now, but a lot of people who pack lunch, I think, would start buying lunch just to become coming and tasting yeah, these new foods true. that we're bringing in. Well, we'll definitely give it a try. <laughs> this other slide is just some quick and healthy snacks. Now, many of us plan our meals well, but we don't, and we do well at mealtime choosing, but we don't plan our snacks so wisely, and I'm one of those people. Um, so here's a couple ideas. You can combine honey and peanut butter and uh, put that on raw apples, carrots. It's even good on rice cakes, uh, whole grain crackers. Mix uh, fruits and berries with low-fat yogurt and top them with granola. You have a nice granola parfait, which we've started. That's one of my favorites. Oh, we started yeah. doing that for breakfast in the morning. Top whole grain crackers with cottage cheese or ricotta cheese. Those are the lower-fat cheeses. You can put a sliced tomato, some red pepper strips on it. Make your own healthy trail mix using some of the different uh, dried fruits and nuts. Spread cream cheese on whole grain bagels, uh, on whole grain bread. You can add sunflower seeds or raisins to the top. And then use the colorful vegetables like the cherry tomatoes, the red and green bell peppers, and uh, broccoli. You know, make it look fun and colorful. You can dip yeah. that in low-fat salad dressing or hummus. And uh, most importantly, just grab a piece of fruit. Yeah. I love fruit. Me too. Easy to grab, <laughs> easy to eat. Now, is it important to keep kids, especially young children, involved in the cooking preparation process? Well, to parents, I'd like to say it's very important to let your children cook with you. For one, they're probably more likely to try foods that they've prepared. Yeah. They're wi more willing to sit at the dinner table, and that's very important with the rest of the family, and help eat, well, they'll eat what they've made if, yeah. and yeah. see the reactions of the other family members and the food they've prepared. That's important to them. It also teaches them how to cook. So when they get older, they know how and they don't uh, rely on takeout and convenience foods when they're away from home. We found that kids who prepare meals can immediately translate their nutrition uh, knowledge into healthful eating behaviors and that happens. I always loved cooking with my grandma and now I make some of the same foods that she taught me. And the yeah. traditions, yep. that's another nice. Yep. Now, would you, would you uh, recommend like starting these kids early? Early. Um, early. When they're young, less than five, they can help with cleaning the vegetables, uh, stirring ingredients together, decorating, you know, the plate, garnishing the yeah, food. Yeah, I like that stuff. Mm -hmm. As they get older, they can help with measuring, chopping, the actual cooking. Be sure to emphasize, though, safety, food safety yeah. and personal safety with yeah. sharp knives and everything and also good hand washing techniques. That's all important. Uh, yeah. It's frustrating. It may be frustrating because it takes longer to cook with someone who's young, yeah. but uh, initially have your patience because uh, the reward's well worth it in the end. Yeah, and most of the time, you know, kids, they like to follow in their footsteps of their parents, so if their parents are eating something, they're more likely gonna try it and figure out if they like sure. it or not when they're young, and then if they get into it, then they'll eat that healthy food as they get older, too. And so. studies have shown more and more that parents do make a difference more yeah. than anything in yeah. how children eat. Well, what are some ways that you encourage healthy habits with your family? Well, my family's grown. My, I have one daughter and she has grown, but in the past I always kept a uh, bowl of fresh fruit handy and in sight so she saw it so she was more apt to grab a piece. Yeah, that's a good idea. I still keep healthy snacks like carrots and celery sticks in the refrigerator because again, I'm more likely if they're yeah. cleaned and ready to go to snack on them. I think I've done a good job with my daughter. She's a uh, health and wellness major at IUP. Oh, well, well, <laughs> so. Yeah, you definitely did a good job then. And studies have shown that parents have considerable influence over the eating patterns of their children. Um, most children will, help, will eat healthy foods if it's available and it's, r it's ready and they can see it. Um, studies show that teens who eat meals with their families uh, have frequent higher intakes of iron, calcium, and many vitamins. That's good. The Fort City Television production students recently spoke with Mrs. Jolena McFarland, a teacher at Fort City High School who will tell us more about the nutrition side of fitness. She'll help us focus on maintaining our health through the holiday season, as well as how to stick with those New Year's resolutions longer than just a few days. Hello, I am Aiden Opelka. I am here today with Jolena McFarlane, who is going to tell us a little bit about dieting after the holidays. 
Hello, Mrs. McFarland. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Now, how do you know if what you are eating is good for you? Well, the government just recently put out a very interesting new tool, very interactive. It's called My Plates. And actually, if you look at My Plates, and I would recommend everyone visiting the sites, if you actually type in mypyramid.gov, it takes you directly there. And it basically just shows you a nice plate and how you should be having about half of your plate full of fruit and vegetables, and then a little bit of protein on the side, and some grains. So actually, if you're eating foods that are healthy for you, you basically are going to know it because you, again, want to bulk up on the fruit and vegetables and we all know what those are and then easy on the protein and grains but those still should be a main part right okay thank you now on average how many calories should be consumed daily well that's that again is going to vary we basically in this in the industry we say 2,000 calories is the standard the reason why we say that is because on average throughout your lifestyle your life cycle 2,000 calories is probably where you're going to be I know uh, teachers our age especially we're around the 2,000 calories however teenagers so all of your age whenever uh, you are growing you're going to need a lot more calories and it again is going to vary typically men need more calories than women and athletes whether you're active or not you're going again burn more calories and need more calories than uh, a non athletes and again it goes by your height your weight your sex and your age if you and my pyramid actually has a really good site. You can actually put all those in, and it will say how many calories you need. Again, if you're an active male, which I know you are, you're probably around like 34, 3,600 calories, where myself would be around 2,000. Oh. Okay, I understand now. Now, how much junk food is accepted into your diet? <laughs> Well, again, that's going to vary. Uh, they basically, we used to call them treats, and we've kind of gotten away from that. And again, it's supposed to be a treat. So basically, every once in a while. Uh, I know that students, your population, have really taken up the numbers of empty calories, and you've kind of taken treats and made them into an everyday thing. And you kind of need to get back into the habit of where it is a treat, where you sit down and totally enjoy it. And my recommendation recommendation for junk food is make sure you do sit down and enjoy it. Not like 10 M&Ms here, you know, I'm on my way to class, go to my locker, take a couple of pixie sticks or maybe a couple of sips of Mountain Dew. That's probably not the way to do it. So, so you definitely want to limit it. Maybe to just one a day, hopefully. So don't just like, you know, pig out and eat different junk foods all day long rather than, you know, break it apart and eat them separate. Yes. You don't want to have Halloween every day, basically. Okay. So. How much weight do you think people gain over the holidays? Well, it was interesting. We actually just Googled, Googled that to find that question. It was a myth that between Thanksgiving till New Year's that the average American gained five pounds. And that actually is a myth buster because the average American only gains about one pound between Thanksgiving till New Year's. However, 5% of the population gains between five to 10 pounds during that same time. So the myth is, it's kind of true for a small percentage, but again, it's typically about a pound. So you're really not going to notice a pound too, uh, too much. Maybe your jeans are a little bit tight, but for the most part, it's nothing super severe. Okay. How would you uh, recommend getting rid of your extra holiday weight? Well, um, New Year's is a wonderful time for people to make new resolutions. So what I would recommend is go ahead and make some New Year's resolutions. However, I think a lot of people fail because they are starting out with a goal that's maybe pretty unrealistic for them. Uh, maybe they want to lose 15 pounds in the next three months or something like that. And it could be realistic for some, but for a lot of people that's going to be unrealistic. So. Uh, resolutions that I suggest would be something like, I'm going to go this entire week without drinking soda. Okay, and if you can achieve that, then maybe add something else to it. Or maybe if you can't achieve that, you know what, Saturday comes around, if you did a great job, go ahead and sit down and have a real nice ice cold one, something you're really going to enjoy. Maybe enjoy that Mountain Dew, but then again, restart. So I think a lot of people make resolutions that are really unrealistic and very hard to abide by. And so once they are off the wagon, then they typically stay off the wagon. Whereas if you just take each week and start that as a new, then you're, we're going to see steps. And again, the government, they just came out with my plate. And they are, again, talking about steps to a healthier you. Take small steps, not leaps, not jumps, but steps. And I've noticed, too, how sometimes it's very difficult after you get off the wagon of not eating, after eating like that, and it's hard to get back on the wagon right. of trying to die. Yes, you want to <clears throat> kind of stay on that, so. 
Okay. So why is it that people diet more after the holidays? Again, I, I don't know if it's a guilt thing. Like, typically families, whenever we celebrate, food is really involved. So I don't know if it's because we have been binging and really eating, you know, probably starting Christmas Eve for a lot of families going through to New Year's. So I don't know if it's a guilt thing from that or if it's just because it is the New Year. And student, everyone, actually, everyone, we all have... Uh, changes that we can make and so that's usually whenever you hear people talking about it and everyone does ask about the new year's resolution so i think it's kind of a combination between the two like oh crap i just ate all this stuff how can i help myself become better so that's kind of how yeah. well miss mcfarland thank you for your time today and answering all of these questions and uh, we'll hope to have a have you back sometime okay sounds good thank you well i made an apelka and that was mrs mcfarland answering a few questions for us so See ya. Now, we've discussed healthy habits, but how important is it for people to pace themselves when eating differently or exercising or taking any other approach to a healthier lifestyle? Well, when trying to change your lifestyle to a healthier one, it's important to remember to set small, reasonable goals. If you try to do too much too fast, uh, you'll become easily discouraged and probably give up altogether. Yeah. If you set small goals, uh, you're setting yourself up to succeed, and uh, small changes will then become permanent parts of your lifestyle, and that's what we want, permanent, healthy right. changes. Uh, don't get caught up in good food, bad food categories yeah. if we're talking about food changes. Um, for instance, if you eat a burger for lunch, have fresh veggies with it instead of french fries, or have a chicken or fish for dinner. You know, Balance out the day, that's the right. most important thing. Two things that you can do if you're eating healthy that will help improve your diet is strive for three a day milk and dairy and five a day fruit and vegetables. Those are two quick things to remember. Yeah, that That's seems good. easy. So is there anything else you would like to add for the benefit of our viewers? Well, what I have is the guidelines for Americans. There are three major goals and they are balance calor calories with physical activity to manage weight, Consume certain foods and nutrients such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, fat and low fat dairy products and seafood. And consume fewer foods with sodium, saturated fats, trans fats, cholesterol, added sugars and refined grains, which pretty much says what we talked about today. The other thing that I wanted to bring up is the replacement for the food guide pyramid. I'm sure you're familiar with it, it is now called My Plate. And um, My Plate can be found uh, under choosemyplate.gov on the web and uh, this is just a really good site for a lot of good uh, information and it talks about healthy eating tips, nutrient contents of foods, meal plans, your BMI calculator, recommended portions and calorie intake, physical activity tips. If you're choosing healthy for uh, your New Year's resolution, choosemyplate.gov. To remember that. Yeah, so it'll basically just help you get through maybe a healthier way of eating. Correct. To check it out, and it's easy. Just go to the website. And look and that's at what's it. nice about my plate. It is easy to look <coughs> at. It's different from the pyramid. Right. Uh, makes it easy. Right. Yeah. Well, we're out of time for today. Our thanks go out to Mrs. Fee, who was kind enough to take time out of her busy schedule to be here with us. Our thanks also go out to the TV production students of Fort City High School, led by their teacher, Mrs. Barbara Keller. They were our film crew today. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. DVD copies of this and all Education Today programming can be requested by contacting Chris Garantano, Multimedia Technician at Catani Junior High School. Visit our website for updated information about the district and have a great week.